In this video, I go over two quick and easy ways to set up Samba shares in Linux. So let's start this out. If you're running Ubuntu or the Nautilus file manager, it is the easy way to actually share something. So let's say I want to share locally my Dropbox folder. I can right click, go down to local network share, and then you'll see the folder sharing. We want to share it, and it'll say service is not installed. We want to install that service. And install. So this installs the Samba package, and then also any sharing service that needs to be done. Okay, with that complete, we can go and say, hey, how do we want to limit this share? I want to do guest access, so anybody on that, my network should be able to access this share quick and easy. And if you want others to create or delete files in the folder, giving them write privileges, click this, and it will allow them to add and subtract files. So we'll go ahead and hit create share. And add permissions automatically would add these. One second, I don't wanna do this quite to my Dropbox folder, so I'm gonna hit cancel. Okay, let's say I wanted to share this AMD GPU Pro folder. I'll right click and hit local network share. Share this folder, allow. This gives right access to anybody with this and guest access as well. So it's saying share name is too long, any warnings appear right here. So let's go ahead and change that share name something a little shorter. With that, we can hit create share and it will go ahead and add permissions automatically so guests could actually write to this. So hit add and now you'll see the icon change to this little sharing. Now, a lot of people think that this actually um, is a separate sharing service other than Samba, but this actually installs Samba and automatically configures it without having to go into the terminal, which is really great because a lot of people uh, mess up or just paste a ton of stuff into terminal uh, when doing this. So let's go over Samba sharing in terminal. I'm gonna walk you guys through, as I do each line, I'm gonna explain what I'm doing in the smb.comp file, which controls Samba and that way you know what you're doing. And I'm also gonna do stuff incorrectly. There's gonna be two things I do incorrectly in this video, which I'm gonna kinda backtrack on. So when I'm doing this, I'm gonna type in something wrong. There's gonna be some kind of misconfiguration in the comp file, because I want you to see what it looks like when you actually do something wrong on it, and how to fix it, or just take it out. And then also, the share name and the actual path are different. So you can create a folder, name it test2, and then you can create a share and name it test1 and map it to the folder test2. So you pull it up on the Windows machine, it shows the share as test1, you click into it, but you're really in the test2 folder because that was in the path line. I wanted to explain those two things before I jump right into the terminal and show you guys what's going on um, and make it a lot easier so uh, more Linux users understand and kind of demystify the smb.comp file. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, let's start out by creating a terminal session here. And we're going to go ahead and create a new folder to share. Um, it doesn't matter. We could share an existing one. But for this instance, we're going to create a new one. We're going to call it make directory um, test share. And if we look there, test share popped in. Um, so with that done, we need to edit or create our uh, smb.comp file. So if we go to cd etc samba, Let's do a long listing. I see our existing SMB file. Um, I highly recommend just going move SMB comp to smb.conf.old. Um, I'm gonna just go ahead. Oh, it help if I did sudo. All right, so what that did is it completely cleared out my config. We're gonna start with a blank slate and I'm gonna go sudo gedit SMB conf. So we're gonna start out with this brand new file here completely from scratch. So 
What I don't like is many other tutorials out there just do a copy paste of a whole bunch of junk and many home users are just trying to create shares and it just drives me crazy. So I'm going to try and make this as simple as possible. I know I'm going to get ridiculed by some system admins for this, but um, for simplicity's sake, for the home user, that's what the, who this is for. It's targeted for those new Linux users that are just trying to set up shares. So global is the first tab we need. So global, make sure you spell it right. And then we need to define the role. So server role equals standalone server. And then next, we need to map our guest. So map to guest equals bad user. Basically, this says, hey, um, if someone does an anonymous login or fails to log in correctly, what do we do with this user? Do we put them as a guest if they're a bad user? In this instance, it would. Now, if you wanted it to be to where it never let anybody in on a failed login or an anonymous user, you'd put never here. However, we're going to make this simple. So bad user. And then we need to allow guess also by doing user share allow guess equals yes. And that will allow guess. From here, I like to add a little bit of security, not much. Honestly, I could go on to the next one and just leave these three lines, but I always recommend at least a, some way of limiting down a completely wide open chair like this. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go host allow 192.168.0.016. Anything that starts with 192.168 will be allowed. So that's any private address from pretty much any residential home will fall into this address range. That's 192.168.1.1. That's 192.168. 255.255, all these work just fine. And then host deny equals 0, .0, 0, 0 forward slash zero. And this just denies anything that's not in that range. So let's say a hacker gets in from an external address and tries to do it, he'd be denied. Um, just a general good best practice. I like adding those lines. You don't have to. Um, if you run into problems, you can remove them. It's not an issue. So let's start with our first Linux share. So to do this, um, we're going to just call this test share. Boom. And then we create a comment for this share. This is just a test share. We create a path. Uh, I'm going to use my home directory. So forward slash home, Titus, forward slash test, share. Well, we could also call this just test folder. Um, and we need to create read only equals no. This makes this writable. And then guest OK equals yes. So anybody that accesses a guest. Now, normally people would stop here, but I like to take it one step forward because if you create stuff in this folder, it would basically stick out as uh, owned and operated by nobody. That was who would be assigned by it, which means as me being user Titus, I wouldn't be able to write or uh, change the file, which is kind of a bummer. So I don't like doing that. So I like to go a little bit further and force create mode equals 0755. What this command does is it makes it to where it will make it writable and executable by anybody that creates it and read and executable by pretty much everybody else. And then force anything that is created to be associated with my user Titus. And force group equals Titus. So with that, we're pretty much done. Those force users and groups basically makes it to my local user, which is named Titus. Um, it makes it so I can easily do this. And anybody that creates anything in this folder will basically be assigned to my user to where I can edit and do anything I want with those files. Um, so let's go ahead and save that and exit it because we're done with the config file. 
From here, um, we test Parm. This tests parameters of our Samba. And if we look here, um, let's look for any warnings. Um, force create mod, it shows that's an unknown parameter. Um, so let's go ahead and take that out. I might be incorrect in what I put there. So let's go ahead. I don't want to leave that. Force create mod. We're just going to remove that. And we'll see what it actually creates the files as. I honestly think it'll be the same. So probably didn't even need that in there. Um, with this, um, we'll do a test parm again. And now it shows no warnings. Everything looks good. And we can go ahead and dump our definitions and take another quick gander at our file. Again, I'm pretty satisfied with everything showing up here. From here, we can reboot the service. So sudo service smbd restart. Um, if you're using Fedora CentOS or Red Hat, please note that's SMB, not SMBD. Everyone else is pretty much SMBD. Sudo restart. Ah, service SMBD restart. Helps if you spell. All right. From here, we are pretty much good, except we need to check our home folder, cd home, because we created a file, um, test share, and I want to just double check to make sure that is right. Test folder, so our folder is actually, I'm going to go ahead and change that test share to test folder. So move, test share. To test folder. Redo that. Okay. Um, just to make sure that it maps it to the right one. So that path file is test folder. It's going to be called test share, but it's actually mapped to the path, which is test folder. So we'll go ahead and exit here. So before I actually pull up the Windows box, I want to go ahead and launch into a version of Windows here that basically will show you how to enable Samba-based sharing in Windows. It's very important you understand a lot of Windows by default do not allow um, Samba or SMB shares. So it's, it's really important that you pay attention to this and make sure this is enabled because you're going to have a lot of heartache in Windows machines connecting to Samba if you don't have this feature. So this is done through add and remove programs in your thing. A shortcut to get to add and remove programs is appwiz.cpl right here. And this pulls up this programs and features screen. Another way of doing it is also going just programs and features into your search. And it would actually pull up or you can just pull up control panel and do it through here as well. So, um, very familiar for you guys. But over here on the left side, look on here and it'll say turn Windows features on or off. You click on this and from here you should see SMB 1.0 SIF support. Make sure this is checked so you can actually see what's going on. So it's very important. I, I honestly just go ahead and just tick it like this and it'll actually support Samba shares. So once you do that, you hit OK, it'll go through the install process and you're good to go. But before I wanted to get into it, I'm gonna actually boot into my server now and test out the shares we created today. I wanted to show that on a Windows 10 box just because it's very important to know exactly what you're getting into um, and always have that feature enabled. Almost every Windows box I get on, if I'm connecting to Linux shares, I put in Samba 1.0 on just so I can really get in there and I don't have to worry too much about the configuration. We're going to pull up our Windows box um, and see what we get. My IP address is the 69.90. It pulls it in. Here's the one share from the GUI explanation from earlier using the Nautilus file system. And here is our test share 
which is currently empty. Let's go ahead and create a new file in here just to see what it does. Um, so we created this file. Chris Titus Tech is awesome. Yay. And we'll close that. From there, we have closed out. I want to just double check and see test folder ll. I just want to kind of take a look at what we created here. So it went ahead and created that test file. It assigned it um, just a standard to read the file, but not write by default. And obviously my user's Titus, which I can rewrite and execute that file. So that's it for setting up a basic test share and terminal. I wanted to get into actually assigning all of uh, these, but in the end, it is just taking way too long to actually explain a lot of this, a lot longer than I wanted. I don't want this to be a 30 or 45 minute video. So I'm gonna go into it on another video and say advanced Samba sharing. And what I'm gonna do is tie into the existing users on this machine. So let's say you had multiple users and you wanted to authenticate and do a lot of different things with those multiple users on the machine. I'm going to show you how to do that on like an advanced Samba share. However, today this should appeal to 90% of you out there to where you can easily get in, create these files, edit these files from any machine, and then come back to your Linux box and easily open up that folder and edit them. Um, and that's great so useful and honestly we didn't even need to create the test folder share we could have created another folder share and then put it in our home directory downloads and it would work just fine so that is samba sharing through terminal and then obviously earlier in the video that was the actual graphic user interface nautilus which is ubuntu's basic default file manager however you can install this on other systems so if you're using kde or you're using another flavor you can always install the nautilus file manager switch over to it and do that gui or that graphic user uh change just there without using terminal. But these are the basic ways of setting up Samba shares in Linux.